Hey everybody, Jenny Clift here. Welcome to our podcast with a good friend of mine, Jason Lawrence, who is a fellow EO or Entrepreneurs Organisation member from uh, officially from Queensland. But it's interesting today, Jason and I share one, um, I guess, commonality and my husband and I, Nick and I sold our business a year ago um, and we're now living between Melbourne and Bali. Uh, so I'm coming from Bali today and, and Jason uh, hasn't sold his business, but has managed to put a leadership team in place and is in his caravan in Fremantle, Western Australia, and uh, been living in that caravan for close to two years now. So I'll get Jason to share that story. But So Jason is founder of a business called Sales Fix um, out of Queensland, but works nationally. And they do uh, big Salesforce implementations. So Jason, welcome. And I'll get you to do a bit better intro of yourself than me. <laughs> Thanks, Jenny. Yeah. Um, EO member since, uh, well, for about seven years now. So um, EO definitely made me think about scaling and how to um, employ people that are better at their jobs than I am. Um, and I recognize that really early on. I was actually in their accelerator program. So um, to, to come through their accelerator program and stay in as a member for seven years and, and grow through that. Um, you and I met through EO and EOS, actually. So uh, we've been implementing EOS for uh, about two and a half, three years. We've had a number of different uh, in implementers, um, but we've got a really good leadership structure now and we follow EOS very strongly. And part of that is down to another commonality is one of my um, managers, um, delivery manager Guy, um, who used to work for yourself. So mm, um, when uh, I saw that he was on the market, I felt it was a great fit. And being aligned to EOS and, and understanding EO really made it an easy um, easy recruitment uh, for us. So and he's doing very well at the moment. Good to hear. So, it shows a level of trust uh, probably through the uh, maybe EO and EOS, but, uh, you know, for, for that call to say, hey, we're looking at Guy, is he a, uh, is he a fit? Um, and knowing he's going into a, another EO member, um, you know, for somebody that we'd worked with for a long time or he'd worked for us for quite, you know, some time and, and going to you was uh, was pretty um, pretty exciting. Yeah, I think that reference is, is stronger than any reference you'd get from a recruitment agency. So uh, thanks very much indeed. And I don't know, we've had a nice uh, a nice, nice bite to eat and glass of wine over, over that. So thank That's you. A, cool. Okay. So tell us about your story. So you run Sales Fix. Um, how did that come about? Um, what is it that you, what's that value that you add to somebody who is implementing Salesforce? Such a big tool that comes with so many options, but actually getting it to, to sing is what you do. Yeah, thank you. Um, my background is actually as a management accountant in the UK. So working for um, larger enterprise organisations such as P&O Ferries, Lango Rock Construction, Rentical Initial, Pest Control, and their parcel um, company at the time and um, as a management accountant always looking for systems to prep to automate and systemize and streamline and especially on reporting I'm a I'm a I'm a numbers person, still am a numbers person. Um, so um, I used to log into Salesforce once a week or once a month and extract some data. I moved organization and needed a CRM, evaluated a number of CRMs and um, Salesforce came out on top. And that would have been in, a, in about 2008. So very early on in the Salesforce days. Um, during, um, there, there was a, migration process moving from Australia uh, from the UK to Australia and during that process um, I was coming over as a management accountant as a qualify as a skill that was in demand at the time and was able to get my permanent residency before I came over but due to a slight delay I ended up learning much more about Salesforce and contracting to some organizations in the UK so when I got to Australia I went I love Salesforce much more than I love accounting so <laughs> I um, I started contracting over here set up a brand sales fix um, very early on when I landed in July uh, 2010 and started getting my own customers and really got a bit busy so I employed somebody uh, Sandy was my first employee love her to bits um, she left me after 10 years but still love her and um, we've, we've got some adventures coming up 
um, and then uh, just just got busy, busier and busier, and employed more people and more employed more people. Uh, ended up with some customers in Melbourne, so we employed some people down in Melbourne, and then um, we've got some offshore teams, which we is is essential. A small offshore team, definitely not. Um, large um, but it, it needs to keep that balance of costs down to make sure we're cost effective to our customers and um, and, and have grown to like year on year um, it, we've had some stumbles um, we've not grown every year um, covid was an interesting time we actually had more income and cash and less um, and profits were good but uh, yeah revenue didn't grow but um, coming out the back end of that it's uh, it's interesting times definitely um, in that space. Uh, so we're now um, about 25 staff, a mix of delivery, um, sales and marketing. Um, our delivery side predominantly is 100% sales source, predominantly what we call sales cloud, which is um, leads, accounts, contacts, opportunities, mm -hmm. lots of service cloud, which is case management and support ticketing systems. 50% of our customers are non-for-profit, interestingly. So um, that's, is it deliberate uh, or accidental? Um, a bit of both. Uh, we very early on recognised we wanted to give back to the community um, through non-for-profits um, and we offered a discount for those non-for-profits. Uh, so we give a, a discounted rate. Um, we've employed Nicole um, as one of our sales execs who's passionate about helping minorities and um, Salesforce and non-for-profit industry. So um, she's really kept that momentum going um, and we're really proud to be able to support non-for-profit organizations uh, through um, through the implementation of Salesforce. So uh, nice. keeping them lean, keeping them understanding their their, their numbers not yeah. customer base, but it might be members, it might be donors, it might be um, uh, people that are in their advocacy space. So, yeah. Um, and what do we do with Salesforce? We help you make it sing. We simplify it as much as we possibly can. Um, it's uh, making sure all the data around your, your, not just your customers, but all of those people that you interact with uh, are centralized and stored and understood to the, in, in a secure way that your, um, users and the users might be internal staff members maybe they might be external staff members but they also might be um, customers as well using Salesforce to access their data um, uh, in a secure way and I think Salesforce um, it, it, I, I know it's the best product out there it's not the cheapest product out there but um, if people really invest in it and invest it through their entire, um, uh, I'm trying to say, if they're investing it more than just a contact database, then they'll get value for money out of it. Um, if they're just treating it as a glorified contact database and a glorified pipeline management system, they won't get their value out of it. Yeah, and it's it's so much more than that. Um, I have to use it for um for one particular thing, and that that's all I use it for. But I know the the back end why they um, make us use it. It seems like overkill for what we do, but I understand the back end and the reporting and the data that they're they're getting from it. So, so I'll get you to share. This is something we do in all of our um, podcasts. A best personal and a best professional. Mm -hmm. Now, running under EOS, you'll be from, very familiar with this, but in the last sort of, you know, three to six months longer, if it if it works, but what's a best personal, a real win for you? Uh, personal is um, being able to facilitate a trip to Cambodia um, at the beginning of October um, to build a house. Um, it's actually, we work with an organisation called Volunteer Building Cambodia. I say we, it's Jane and myself predominantly, and we drag along anybody else that we can encourage to find some time or um, um, inclination to come out and help us. So Volunteer Building Cambodia, VBC for short, is a Cambodian-led non-NGO, non-for-profit organisation that builds houses for um for people that are in need they've got great social workers to establish who these people are which villages should they be in um, and we've helped build um, we've had myself and sales fix have funded five houses in total over the years and jane and i have been out there and built three of those houses um, 
So this was our third house build. Um, and uh, over the years, it's the design of the house has changed. The materials have improved dramatically. Safety has been improved. No longer are we standing on ladders and wobbly, wobbly bits of wood. We're now on proper scaffolding and things. So, but it was just so in, um, rewarding to go out there and, and see a family transform, knowing that we've done it before and seeing what's happened with those families in the past. So from a personal perspective, win absolutely helping out that family is is amazing nice and you mentioned some of that your when we we're chatting earlier that um some of your leadership team joined you with this time as well that's correct yes um we uh, opened it up to a number of mem team members that had been with us more than a few years uh, there's a particular um, incentive program we've got for longevity and that's to, to come and join us in that house building in Cambodia and we took the opportunity of bringing along two of our new uh, newer leaders um, a guy in my delivery who's my delivery manager and Matt who is my sales manager relatively new to sales fix and um, they actually brought their partners as well so uh, partly funded by sales fix partly funded by themselves they came out and joined us so there was six of us on that build including my wife and um, it was a really good way um, to see how Celtics's values are lived um, and the um, and rewarding for us all to sort of like understand more about um, the the wider world. And great way to to connect and build that that you know strong healthy leadership team too. Um, okay, Absolutely. best professional. Tell me about something a real win professionally in the last period of time. Yes, so I think through EO and then implementing EOS uh, a few years ago is to really get that leadership team to a point where um, I'm the visionary. Um, I actually want to get to a point where I'm the shareholder and not even the visionary, but uh, for the time being, I'm the visionary and having trust in the leadership team through um, the integrator we've got in the business uh, and the leadership team through that process to be able to leave them to do their jobs and do it better than I can. Um, which resulted in me being able July to September this year to take three months off. Um, now, I'm also the finance director uh, as a management accountant, as you can imagine, I'm all across the numbers. So I still do payroll and I still pay the bills. Uh, the good thing about our organisation is it's pretty easy, that side of things, but it's my way of keeping on pulse with all of the data. Yeah. Um, so I was monitoring um, their scorecards. Um, I had a monthly catch up with the integrator the, the vi meeting once a month um and that was pretty much it i didn't attend the leadership l10 meetings uh, i didn't attend any of the, the team meetings um so i we we kicked it off with the annual i then went away for three months and i came back for the quarterly um and uh, was able to to really enjoy relax um, think about where does jason want to be for for the for the future so can you talk me through the process of getting to that point? Um, so, you know, we sold our business, we did a merger, we sold it, and we went through sort of a transition. But but being able to actually take three months off and, and get that, and I know some of those leadership team were new. Um, I know Guy joined mm. you, what, January, February? Um, so it's only a yeah. few months. And, you know, still you know, in the sort of, you know, the tech sector, but really a very different, um, you know, industry. We could come out of managed services, so IT mm. services into Salesforce, a product that he didn't know at all, um, and his service manager. Um, yep. Tell me about that process of those few months leading into taking those, those three months off, because it's a big thing to walk away from your baby for three months and leave other people to, you know, babysit. Yeah, I think it's it'd been happening for some time beforehand. Actually, it's not. It wasn't just the three months up to that. It's really the three um, months it becomes reality. This, <laughs> it's from this that's thing right. that's going to happen to oh, what's happening? And and I think in the three months beforehand, it because I was already um, uh, traveling a little bit. I was actually stepping down yep. more and more. I was attending less meetings anyway. Um, but I think it is having the systems and processes, the reporting mechanisms, the escalation mechanisms, um, implementing EOS has certainly standardised that to a point where it, it's such regularity, um, such clarity on what we're focusing on. Um, in fact, half the, half the time it will be 
um, it'll be me because I'm the visionary bringing up the shiny objects, the, the squirrel in the room and going, oh, what's that? Should we be looking at that? Um, rather than focusing on um, the day to day and, and the rocks that's been agreed. So having EOS in Matt was, I think, Guy, being from an EOS background, really did help because he was able to immediately um, step into the EOS world in sales fix. He actually pulled us up on a few things because we weren't as strong as it as you you obviously were. Oh, that's were. good to hear. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, so he he certainly pulled us up and improved um, our, I wouldn't say compliance, but alignment to the the, the best practices um, that we'd probably let slip and sli slide a little bit. Um, and then when Guy, uh, when Matt came on board, uh, he had nothing, to, he knew nothing about EOS. So straight away, got him to read what the heck is EOS, buy the, um, the traction books. So he's got it there. So we can go, right, okay, Matt, you, you now need to go and read about cascading messages and understand them better again. You now need to go and read about this. But Guy helped him through that process. So um, he, 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 he trained him uh, where needed where he saw the gaps he was training um, Matt on EOS and Matt um, has actually got a business ownership background he used to run his own business um, so he immediately saw the value of this and didn't fight it he 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 embraced it and that gave us a lot of confidence uh, Karen my integrator she's worked with me for seven years so trust her implicitly um, on a, all sorts of different things so um, I knew um, um, that it, it, it was a good mix I also follow a, um, Pat, a lot of Patrick Lencioni's work and I'm a big fan of his working genius uh, model which is quite a new model that has come out and so um, We'd done working genius assessments as individuals and as a team, and we'd identified to make sure that we've got enough people in the um, WIs, enough people in the DGs, and enough people in the ETs in the right spaces and the right spots. So we knew we had a leadership team that was good um, and good balance. Um, yeah, and balance. So um, I was very confident that um, actually me getting out of the way. Uh, was was going to help them rather than them yeah. come keep coming and running back to me again. This is your problem to solve. This is your problem to to fix. So those monthly VI um, meetings with Karen. Yeah. Yes. N not content, but talk me through what you what sort of things you cover in those sort of meetings. What are you looking for? Um. So um, it, it's a bit different between a pure VI because I am the finance director so I end up rolling in like the finance some of the finance conversations unless they're urgent of course we'll, yeah. we'll pick up the phone and go what's going on this is urgent I need we need to solve this now but more of the longer term finance conversations uh, roll into that um, we um, it, it, if I've read a blog post so actually for the three months that I was away, if I read a blog post and went, oh, this is a technical blog post, I'd actually put it on our architect's um, uh, um, issues board. Yeah, and go, oh, I've seen this blog post. Do you think we should be investigating this further? If it's more strategic change of direction ideas, so seeing AI and seeing the AI consultant and then even so the increase in cybersecurity and going, well, okay, should we be doing more on this or seeing somebody posting about ISO 9007 on a on a EO WhatsApp chat and going, oh, I wonder whether we should be doing something like that. Uh, I'll put that all on the visionary integrator board. Okay. And then all of those high level things, we'll have a conversation and go, okay, is this something that actually, um, and this is, Karen's quite good. She's an E and a T, so she's not, she, um, she pushes back a lot and go, well, what, what's where's the benefit what what do you want me to do and i go well, i don't know yet i said well she then goes oh go away then and and, and what a great question from an integrator what do you yeah. want me to do about this <laughs> that's yeah. right yeah so um and so then quite often it'll come back to me and I, either it'll die because i'll go oh yeah <laughs> it's not that important for me to go and spend some more time and and coming up with a proposal or i'll go away and go oh i'll actually sit down and write up just like I'd, I'd ask my staff member. If a staff member came to me and says, I think we should be doing this, and that's all they've done, I go, well, go away, write it up. And if you write it up, 90% of the time, I'm going to say yes, because you've spent the time in qualifying it yourself. 
and she was doing the same thing with me um and that um so it's yeah where are we seeing should we be looking at this and I quite often some of those then would just die some of them would come on an issues list um within just within the vi and some of them would be moved from our board she would then move them from our board onto her leadership board it's so yeah, an, um, an integrator said this to me recently of, of a her visionary who is very very high visionary um and also um i pretty sure ADHD um, she said if he t if he mentions something oh I know good combination <laughs> um, and I, but I think there's a lot of those um, if he if he asks me something three times I know he's serious the third time he mentions it I'll go and look into it but if it's only twice I just ignore it <laughs> and he doesn't yeah. know that <laughs> yeah. no it's, it's it's very true um, in in yeah quite often I'll, I'll put things on the board and people are going what are you talking about? And then I'll go, yeah, you're right. It's, it's nothing. And then I'll the second time um, and then the third time. So unfortunately, some sometimes they go, but I've told you no twice. So why are you bringing it back up to me? They get frustrated the other way because you're like, well, we've, I thought we'd already agreed that we weren't going to do this and you're still bringing it up. Yeah, you're not, le you're not letting, um, letting go. As a, you know, term, letting go, go. You're let not letting go, go of the vine. vine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you have, I guess, um, or your team, your business has sort of a bird's eye view into sales at the moment. What are you seeing? What's happening in the industry or what's happening uh, in the economy, I guess, more than the industry? Yes, um, I'm not. So I can only say talk from our experience within um, our deals. A, it's a bit harder because we're also growing up we're getting bigger deals our average deal size is increasing uh, which is great um the size and complexity of customers are, are getting bigger um but what we're also seeing and hearing through conversations is deals are slowing down um we've had things on our commit um that the salesperson i'm committing that we will win this job where unfortunately is they think that they're going to win it in September and we don't get the contract signed until the end of October. Yep. Whereas we should have really have, have in the past, that would have been yeah, done deal. We've, we've all agreed it's the right thing and it's just the, the, the board needs to sign it off and that's not a big deal. Whereas now it's a big deal. They're, they're, uh, it's taking longer and more rigor, more why we should be doing this needs to be presented. And then, of course, board members are going, oh, and have you thought about Microsoft? Have you thought about Zoho? Have you thought about, and, and sometimes they have, but dismissed it because no, it's not the platform of choice. And sometimes it's, yes, we thought about it, we've dismissed it. And then they want to know why you've dismissed it more deeply um, because it's a cheaper product or it's a, well, those two are, are cheaper products at the moment. So yeah. Or more aligned to Microsoft, more, more aligned, well, we've got Office 365, so we should have CRM as well. And Well, not really, no. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, that's right, exactly. So um, we're seeing definitely a slower deal cycle, more rigor through that deal cycle. We're having to jump through more hoops. Um, but what we've done to, to placate that is we've started, for certain size deals, implementing a mutual action plan. So... Um, earlier we'll actually sit down and go here's the steps we think the timelines and the step we think we need to do to get this deal across the line and actually present that to our exec sponsor and go hey, is this aligned with you um, and sometimes you know, um, um, who will be signing off this oh I will so you definitely got authority to sign this off yes okay all right we've got to trust them yeah. uh, when they say that but then sometimes they go, oh, actually, no, I, it won't be me that signs it off. I'll be presented it to the CEO, and the CEO will be presented the, to the board. Right, so okay. Add a month. Yeah. yeah, add a month or, right, um, what does the CEO need? Yeah, and instead of us presenting what does the exec sponsor need, it's what does the CEO need because they're the ones that's, that's signing it off in that case. So that mutual action plan is really be helping us to understand better the time frame, the the other people in the room. We weren't trusting that our one on one and two people's relationships and presentation and and um, just the the 
knowing that Salesforce is Salesforce. Nobody got fired for buying Salesforce. Um, so do you think that is the current climate or do you think that's, and you use the term, the business growing up, so you, you're now talking to bigger business, they've got more, they've got more rigour, they you know, may have a board that they have to present or combination of, of the two? Um, it, it probably is a combination of the two, but our sales people's backgrounds have been working for those large organisations as well. So for so them to be the caught process. out. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah true. Yeah. yeah yep. To them to be caught out would, would indicate that, yeah, they've, they're they going through that. I mean, and even some of the smaller deals as well. So um, smaller customers that um, previously would just be rolling over another um, few thousand dollars worth of work now going, well, yeah. We just don't have the budget at the moment or we've got a we've got some cost constraints and we've just let somebody re- redundant so why should we be spending money mm-hmm. the fact that salesforce helps processes and improves efficiencies to enable you to have run more efficiently <laughs> you know, have less staff <laughs> sometimes so yeah it's never the argument we like to put forward but that's what it should be doing yep. so and yeah. and certainly that's what i'm sort of seeing and hearing too is there's just a bit more caution. Uh, people are, you know, um, wary of what's going on. I think, you know, Australia's always been reasonably um, you know, lucky going through these sort of downturns. I know New Zealand is in a much um, more difficult place. You know, US is pretty uh, volatile, but, um, but yeah, it's an interesting time of just um, caution is the word that comes to mind for me. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, just asking a few more checks and balances before they say yes. Yeah. Um. So when people come to you and looking at Salesforce um, or your help with their Salesforce, are they brand new, setting Salesforce up, we've bought it out of the box and it doesn't do anything? Mm-hmm. Or are they down the path and going, oh, let's, make, let's get more out of it? Um, it's a mix. Our preference is definitely brand new. Greenfield implementations, they're always easier because we we can control what we're doing. We don't have to uh, look at te- any technical debt, um, even though it's a very low code product, there is still technical debt or, or business process change um, that needs to be considered carefully as we as we do any sort of like IT type of, of changes. Um, I, I actually haven't looked at the numbers recently, but um, I'd probably say um, 40% of our customers are, are our repeat customers. We've got a good high retention rates. Um, and then probably more of a mix now because Salesforce has been around for so long of people that have Salesforce to one degree or another. Um, and it's go- it might be going through a new iteration. In fact, one of the deals we've just won is consolidating three three instances of Salesforce into one. So they've that organization has got three little versions of Salesforce running and they've gone, yep, this is now our platform of choice as a, at an enterprise level. Let's work out how do we bring this into a single um, solution. Um, but it might be um, it, they've, they've, their business model has changed. So they implemented one thing one way and now we need that stripped out and replaced with something else. Or they matured. They pro, um, Field Service Lightning is a new, is, is not new. It's, it's mobile workforce management or Field Service Lightning. It's been around for a while, but it, um, they might have cobbled together their own solution for that. And now they're looking to, to use a standard product um, to do that. So we've got to unpick their processes and um, and align it to a standard product suite. Okay. So, so you, it could be any of those. You said about the company having three different instances. Was that through a merger or was that through just uh, disparate um, people I, you know, doing I, their own thing? I, I, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> don't know enough of that. That and that's um, it's indicative of the sort of level of detail I'm in at the business right now. It's it's our second biggest deal uh, ever. Um, and uh, the first time I had a look at the statement of works was uh, when I signed it uh, yesterday. Okay. Um, so um, leadership team all across it. It's been backwards and forwards with their um, solicitors. Um, uh, I, uh, and, and from a finance between you and me and the finance, uh, I'm the finance person. I looked at what's the invoicing terms. Yeah, um, making sure we've not not giving away things there. What's the what's the rate? Making sure we'd um, uh, we'd we'd they'd not agreed a rate that I feel was un, 
unbearable um, or always going to start diluting our average rate um and uh, one other thing uh, i can't remember what the third one was but yeah just um no i can't think what the third one was yeah so <laughs> Now, tell me about your team because I know you are remote and you've been you've had remote for a mm. long time. So, right now, just you know, um, you've got an offshore team, Philippines. Yes, yeah. Um, so the team we've got um, a few members that are in Brisbane, where our head office is. Um, it's actually on the north side of Brisbane in North Lakes. That room that uh, office gets used about once a week. So again, we go for is it cost effective to have that? But it it, at the moment, we still keep it. Um, we've also got uh, some access to shared office space in Brisbane City. So if any team members want to go in there. So um, so we've got, a, 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 I don't know, five in Brisbane. Probably got about four or five in Melbourne. Uh, again, sh uh, shared office space in Melbourne. We seem to move around a fair bit, but we've, we've now got one in the Docklands um, uh, in Melbourne as a shared office space. Uh, and again, uh, I know a couple of members, a couple of team members go in very regularly, um, and others, um, yeah, as and when they, they uh, feel appropriate. Or we, um, there's some activity that we're encouraging them to go, come in to to see. We've got a new member in Sydney, a new uh, a, a team member in Newcastle. Um, so not because we were looking for a team member in Sydney or Newcastle, they just happened to be the best person for the job at the time. Um, and in this uh, remote workspace, we were happy to, to employ them that way. And we were very careful to make sure they were happy because we have had in instances where somebody's gone, yeah, I can work on my own. And then they've come on board and they've gone, well, where's, where's my, where, where do I meet up with people? And I said, well, that's what remote yes. working is. You don't. You've got to work that out yourself, yeah? If you want a shared office space and you find one that's reasonably priced, we'll certainly look at it and go, yeah, we'll contribute towards it. But it's your, you need to solve that problem, not us, yeah? Um, and then internationally, um, we've got about uh, four or five in the Philippines. Um, we've had Philippine members um, for a number of years through a number of BPOs. Uh, at the moment, again, they all work remote. Um, we facilitate them coming together once a month. Uh, I think actually two of them are from one BPO to another and one's independent. Okay. So um, we're not even... Um, it, it, again, it's the right person for the job, not because they happen to be living near that BPO or prepared to move to that BPO's offices. Um, and we've got a, a, a couple of members that we tap into in India um, through an organization called iBirds. Um, I've been working with Aslan Bari, who's the founder of iBirds, since about 2012. Um, so on and off, we've sort of like tapped into them and, and not tapped into them, depending on the work we've got, the workload we've got, the type of work we've got. So when it gets to heavy coding work, that's where we, we tap into okay. them. So Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it, that you've got that real, and I love to hear this, it's, you've got that real focus on getting the right people um, and having them in the right seats and, and where they're located. Um, but also interesting that people, um, and I've certainly seen this, that, you know, um, yes, I'm happy to work remote. Oh, I'm all on my own. Uh, this is not working for me. Well, that's what it means. And yeah, we've had a remote workforce for most of our business. Um, actually, all of it. Um, you know, we started the business in 96. We actually had uh, staff over the time that, um, you know, we never actually met in person. They've worked for us for three or four years, but they were, you know, so far away from me, the, from us that we you know, never actually met them in person and, and way before the days of Zoom and that sort of thing. Um, and, and it's just, it's a change in mindset. Um, where you know, we coming into COVID, we didn't really have to do very much differently because um, everybody worked from home at various times anyway. Um, so very, very, very different mindset to having you know the old you know if I can't see them in, you know working at their desk, then they're not working. Um, and most yeah. of us now have the tools to to know whether they're working or not. Uh, yeah. No, I mean. Um, I'm a big fan of remote workforce, but I also feel that there's a balance. Yeah. Um, how do we um, learn from each other, hear those anecdotal stories, go, oh, I didn't know we, you, we've done that before. Um, and that's something that we do miss via work, remote work. And organic learning, um, overhearing you know, and, two people discussing a problem and then going, yeah. oh, I didn't know that. You know, that's yeah. something new. 
Organic learning. I love. I, I actually love that just phrase. came up with that myself. That I'm yeah. very pleased. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it is. It's yeah, such an important thing of just those um, conversations. And we actually had a Teams room during COVID that we called the Hokey Pokey room, and it was because you could step in when mm-hmm. you were free and step out if you needed to, you know, some quiet time to work on a problem or to. Um, to take a call um, so and and that's what that room was about was just connecting when everybody you know during Melbourne's 17 years of lockdown or whatever it was that we had um, of people um, actually being able to just hang out together and so it wasn't uh, uh, it, it was going in and being there uh, virtually not not via text uh, yeah no we we were through COVID we were strong fans of um, and technology come and gone. So Remo was one and there was another one that worked well for a while. And then currently we've still got a, um, a subscription to Ovice, O-V-I-C-E. And it's it's like that virtual room. It is actually a virtual oh, office. Okay. So you can actually move between rooms and see That's who's cool. in rooms and see who's working together and not working together. Um, and pick the, pick the um, introverts through and COVID, the abs- as to who's hanging out together. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's correct. Absolutely. Um, so through COVID, it absolutely kept us together and and helped definitely the the, the Victorians. They they said they wouldn't mm-hmm. have survived if they hadn't have had that sort of environment. Um, we're struggling now to go. How do we keep that sort of environment, um, that connectivity, remotely? Um, because the impetus to use it is re- much reduced people it's it's not the same being in the room when you've got people literally talking in your ear, earpiece straight yeah. into your headphones so um it's it is a different experience so um and also from a customer's perspective i i i'm a firm believer that sitting in a customer's office you learn so much more than having that workshop um even if you have the workshop um, in person in a customer's office and then you just sit in their office for the rest of the day you will so pick up so much more uh, the relationship between you and them gets so much closer um, and so getting that balance between and they they quite often aren't in the office five days a week as well so they don't want the two days a week that they're in the office to now be yeah. consumed by by yeah. a consultant with them yeah because they want to be hearing the stories from their counterparts as well so again that's the struggle one of the struggles we we're trying to get right um encouraging that face-to-face time um or in real life in real person time um uh, is getting that right it is tough tough one so what's next for you so you in your caravan, you're coming up two years, you're in Fremantle. So what's next for you and mm. what's next for the business? Yeah. Um, for the business is to continue to to grow, to um, improve on our profitability. We've invested a lot in marketing and salespeople. Um, we're, we're beginning to see the fruits of that uh, coming about. A little, always a little bit late, um, but uh, yeah, and that's where the profitability is uh, needs to just be ramped up a little bit. So improve that profitability. Um, myself, um, continuing to plan for that a chairman type or 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 shareholder type board responsibility at Salesfix, but I'm also looking at where do I fit in in that consultancies could is this a consultancy that i can do for other organizations whether that's working genius patrick lencioni's model which i love whether it's be on the boards um if anybody's listening and wants a a, a, a board member to sit in i'd love to to just understand that better and and go how do i help and advise and um and guide people or give probing questions so for me it's yeah more of a shareholder role at salesfix um chairman shareholder um less hands-on well less day-to-day um looking at advisory board advisory roles um potentially doing that um looking at uh, patrick lencioni's working genius model and going could i do that i, I don't think i'd be a good integrator uh, for oh sorry implementer for uh, eos i'm too direct Some i'm too like uh, yeah, yeah why aren't you just doing this um Yes, they do. Um, but uh, yeah, no. Um, so looking at some other uh, things outside. But to be honest, I still love helping small businesses, getting my hands dirty. Um, my love language is um, words of affirmation. 
so to work with a small business and instantly get gratuity and going wow this is amazing jason we want more is just always fills my bucket so um uh how do i get more of that is, it's is interesting. always on my I was, mind uh, running well. a quarterly with a client just uh in the last couple of weeks and i'm actually doing some additional work with them uh in sort of people and culture at the moment working with them to um for a people and culture strategy doing some um leadership coaching with their team and and i actually got a shout out in the quarterly as the implementer uh, but for that additional work that I was doing and first time it's ever happened and I thought oh, this is actually really cool I, I um, you know it takes me back to the days when I worked in our um, in our IT business of you know of that and and you kind of I'd forgotten um, just how good that feels to to sort of be part of that that team um, so I shall let you go go and enjoy Fremantle but just to finish up can you share three tips with the audience um, of what's got you where you are? Um, so it could be resources, could be, um, you know, what, whatever you feel like sharing today. Yeah, I mean, three tips getting me to where I am. Definitely uh, a look at Entrepreneurs Organisation. Um, it really did make me think um, how to scale, um, how to be not, not the smartest person in the room, but it also gave me aspirational ideas of what running a business could be like. Um, and, the, and, um, uh, and I remember very distinctly um, one of my forum members working three days a week um, and I'm going how on earth can you run a business that size three days a week that's what I want to be getting to so um, implementing EOS uh, I know this is an EOS podcast but honestly it really has enabled me to um, let the business run and have the people um, uh, following our values and 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 leadership team doing their job much better than I can in a structured um, framework um, and lastly, um, for the future around your organisations, get your data sorted, get your data in a sing single place. Um, if you want to utilise AI in the future and you, you don't know what you going to be able to do in the future we don't know yet um, but get it into a single place um, and Salesforce uh, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Salesforce I read a lot of what they do and sometimes I go what on earth are you doing and then six months later, I go, okay and then six months later, I go, oh my god why didn't I do that a year ago um, but uh, they certainly um, they're all over the AI space in a trusted environment um, and if your data is not in Salesforce they can't help you and if whatever technology platform that you're going to go with your data's got to be in it for that technology platform to utilize your data to give you the best out of it whether that's GPT so Salesforce right now they've had AI and data analytics and things like that for a while but they've already got the ability to recommend the right service response based on other service responses uh, um, utilizing a um, large language model um, that's reading your data and um, it's securely and safely that's trust is number one in Salesforce's values um, but whether it's Salesforce or outside of Salesforce get your data sorted all of your data oh, sorted. Fantastic um, great tips um, I think you know it's I'm actually finding it fascinating where AI is going I know a lot of people are scared about it and maybe I should but I'm just looking at it going oh my god this is just opening up a whole new world and and um, just fascinated of where it'll where it'll take us where it'll go and trust definitely is key because I'm sure people would use it for for things that perhaps we'd prefer they didn't um, there's always going to be that sort of thing but um, but Jason thank you so much for your time really appreciate it um, I know you're uh, you're travelling, you're on the road. Um, so really appreciate you uh, taking an hour out of your day to want uh, to have a chat with us today. Great. Not a problem. Thanks. It's been great, Jenny. Thanks for inviting me along.